the moment, as you all know, we're experiencing some of the most inhumane and brutal spending cuts to services historically set up through struggle to address poverty and inequality. And you've heard some of the work that we're doing today. An unprecedented attack on the welfare state that, amongst many other things, will take away the realisation of our right to live free from violence and access legal aid, protection and justice. We're experiencing a fundamental change in the nature of our country. Specialist refuges and other black services are disappearing. They're blaming us, the people who dare to dream of a more equal, more just society. It's the fault of multiculturalism, they say, of socialism, of feminism, of workers, unions, immigrants and young people who are not instilled with respect. I think that we in this room know better. We know that this isn't true. We know that the cuts are affecting the already most vulnerable and marginalised the most. Research published at the beginning of the month found that more than 2,000 charities, 2,000 charities, are being forced to close services and make South redundant. We know that women will be disproportionately affected by the cuts. Black people, communities and services will also be disproportionately affected. Any guesses what all of this means for black women? Black women and black women services face a double hit. There's not enough time to detail what this means in practice, especially as Sunday is going to be speaking on a panel on the cuts tomorrow. Um, and I don't want too much repetition. But I would recommend that you look to the TUC, Fault Economy, Voice for Change, Voluntary Sector Cuts, Black Activists Rising Against the Cuts, Forza Society and the Women's Budget Group for more details. I'm going to focus on the threat to black women's services, um, and particularly looking at the experience of SBS. Although this threat has intensified in the past year, it's not a party political trend. All of this was foreshadowed during the, the, the years of the Labour government. Back in 2007, Ealing Council decided to withdraw funding from SBS in order to follow the government's equality and cohesion policies. What started as a local funding issue soon came to signify a much larger struggle for equality and for the right to exist as an autonomous, secular, anti-racist and feminist organisation. It was also, sadly, a precursor of what was to come. Ealing Council argued that giving money to SBS was against equality, diversity and cohesion, that our very name excluded white women and therefore was discriminatory and divisive. So, SBS did what SBS does best and took the council to court, arguing that their interpretation of race equality legislation meant that those historically and currently disenfranchised and discriminated against were not protected. The council's approach threatened the very existence of organisations like ours set up to counter racism and provide black women with real alternatives to community, religious and culturally based ways to deal with family disputes. And Sonia has talked a bit about mediation. Um, we've heard from her some of the dangers inherent in this. More crucially, the Ealing Council's decision constituted a redefinition of equality, divorced from the needs of the most vulnerable and deprived, but rather reflecting the needs of the majority community. If we provide the same services to everyone, not only is this likely to be determined in line with the needs of the majority, but we also ignore unequal structural relations based on class, gender and race. Luckily, the judge in the case, Judge Moses, agreed with us saying that an equal society recognises people's different needs, situations and goals and removes the barriers that limit what people can, and can, can do and can be. This challenge became a key moment for black and minority groups that have organised politically to counter racism and gender, caste, religious and ethnic divisions between and within communities. Although we were successful this time, our experience was a warning bell to secular, progressive black women's groups, which rings very loudly and clearly across the years and echoes <coughs> to the present day. <coughs> SDS started another legal challenge recently, this time against the Ministry of Justice, about the government's decision to remove the provision of legal aid from non-detention immigration, especially for women subject to domestic or gender-related violence. 
This put the onus on migrant women, abused migrant women, one of the most vulnerable and marginalised groups in our society, to navigate their ways around the law and legal processes. This was in complete contravention of race, gender and disability discrimination law and the Human Rights Act. This time, SPS won before we even went to court, thanks to our legal challenge and the wonderful lobbying that we and other organisations such as Rights of Women did. The government announced last month that they would table an amendment to cover domestic violence cases. It isn't enough though. SPS is determined to ensure that this covers all vulnerable women, including trafficked women and migrant domestic workers. I really want to stress the vital importance of us all taking action. I hope that what you've just heard um, from Hanana this morning, Sophia Salma and um, Sandhya just now, and also for those of you who watched Love, Honour and Disobey this morning, has convinced you of the need for specialist services. These services, refuges, shelters, immigration and asylum advice centres, are our bricks and mortar. They're the very foundation of the feminist movement, the foundation for any hope for equality between women and men. Let's not forget, we're starting from a very low basis here. Even before the cuts were first suggested, we were fighting for more, for a single rape crisis centre in London, for um, a proper um, advice service for asylum seekers in Wales, against the shrinking of feminist, anti-racist, secular spaces. Let's not be under any illusions here. What we had five years ago wasn't enough. It was barely enough to scratch the surface of what was really needed. And that is going away. Even what we have, what we had, has taken decades to build. It's been built on and by the needs, fears, sweat and dreams of many thousands of unsung heroes of our movement. There's nothing in place to replace them. The big society will not come to the rescue of women experiencing violence abuse, of women fleeing very real threats of persecution trying to find asylum in this country, of women whose identities of race, class and gender intersect and combine in an interlocking web of discrimination and oppression from which there's very little way out. Do we, as a movement, have the energy and the time to build it all up again? The landscape of our country has changed radically since the birth of the rape crisis and refuge movements. I'm not sure we can do it all again. And why should we have to? This is something that we, or our mothers, aunts, grandmothers, fought for. It should be something that we're willing to protect. Once our services are gone, that's it. They're not coming back. What about the most vulnerable, the most marginalised, the most at risk in our society? What happens to them? How can we face some of the most vulnerable women and say to them that the state cannot help? As a movement, do we care enough about them to fight, to fight for our services, to fight to retain the bare minimum required that we do have? As a movement, we have to care about these women. The backlash against feminist progress has been coming for years. It's now upon us. The wave is right over our heads and it's about to break. We're at a historic moment right now. We owe it to ourselves and to future generations to do something. The struggle for feminism, for these services, is a struggle for our human rights. Everything that we enjoy today, that we take for granted, was created by struggle. And you can see some of the pictures up there. Um, and you can see the history of SBS in this. Everything that we have today was created by people standing up and seeking a better way forward. It's now our turn, the people in this room, the people outside this room, to do the same and defend what's right. I'm going to end with an SBS slogan, which I love, which is, Our tradition, struggle, not submission.